morning. It's a beautiful day here at McKeever Custom Choppers. How are you doing today, Mikey? Pretty good, Sonny. How are you? Thank you for coming today. I'm fantastic. So, um, this is a much anticipated video, and why don't you tell us what you're sitting on? Okay, what I'm sitting on is the Triple X Project. Um, it's been on Facebook, and I'm talking about it a lot in the past 10 months, I believe. And there was one little sneak preview of it left side of the gas tank. Well, here's the bike. And uh, it's been a long road. It's been a long winter, and we all know that. But I was locked down here solid with this little sweetheart, and here she is. It's been test ridden over Memorial Day. Um, I have to say without a seat, because I'm a tough old bird, I rode this thing with a towel for 300 miles, and um, seat's on its way next week. We're actually filming without a seat today, but it's kind of cool you can see details on your seat and stuff, so no big deal. But uh, the bike is now done, the bike is test driven, and here we are. YouTube video of it, follow up to her sister bike. The um, George Kramer Sportster with the red, white, and blue stripe kind of begat this bike, and it's uh, kind of full circle here today with this. But um, she's alive, she's running, it's a beautiful, beautiful bike, I think. We're doing a video to see what you guys Okay, are. back to Triple X again with me off of it now so you can see it. Um, I'm going to try to explain this bike as best I can. Bear with me, I'm a bit overwhelmed by it myself. It's a beautiful bike. I get looking at it, I get talking about it, I'm kind of all over the page. But let's start as simple as possible. What you see, the basic layout of this bike, the lowness of it, the stretch, is all pretty much due to adding the hardtail to it, taking off the swing arm, getting rid of stock Sportster. I used a 30s era VL type springer on the bike, and the logic between with that was the rear leg is much narrower than your regular wishbone springer. I like the narrowness of the front end, the strength of the I beam. I think it fits the bike very, very well. So um, that's the basic gist of what you see of the stretch, lowness, and the basic profile of the bike is how I accomplished that. Frame-wise, um, where I grafted the hardtail section to it, and you can probably see this better in detail, but she's fully molded, everything's grafted in, transitioned beautifully, all molded on all welds, everywhere you see. I like that flow of not seeing welds. Again, carried that all up into the neck area. Cut off all the stocks Forster lock assembly here on fork stocks, and which really cleans up, gives you a nice swooping neck. Beautiful transition from front end up to gas tank. Follow my hand on the whole profile of this bike. I think it's beautiful. A little kick in the fender and just a lot of meat hanging out at the back. This is hot. I love this style of the bike, it's meat tail. But uh, what I've done is taken the whole motor out, obviously, complete rebuild. The bike started with a set of Andrews Y-Grind cams, which make a pretty good amount of power in a 1,000cc Sporty. I kept them in. Um, again, power to weight ratio is stunning on this bike. This thing really scoops with the Andrews Y-Grinds. Top it off with a classic SNS Super E Shorty carb. Extended air filter to punch more airflow into the motor. The heads are redone, triple angle valve job. My signature Battleship Gray heads, I love that look brings the 60s back to me when I was a kid and I saw bikes in magazines. <coughs> As you can see, the finish on the motor is all in black. This is not powder coated. It's actually a process I do in paint with urethane. Holds up the heat very well. Um, very, very resilient paint. Should you scratch something on any of these covers, generally you can buff it out, which you can't do with powder coating. So I do the finish on the motor. So. Not to be confused with powder coating, this is all painted. This is all done with these hands here. Uh, looking back into coming out of the motor now. Battery box obviously fills this area really nicely. Pipes were made by me. Started out with the ends from the stock pipes that came on the bike and worked the exhaust from here. I love the overlap here, the starter and over center and everything. Nice little set of pipes sound really good. Um, coming back into the oil tank area, these oil tanks I built from a kit, which is basically a round tube of steel with two turned end caps. I can shrink it anywhere I want, stretch it, put all my own fittings in. It's called a bomb oil tank. Very nice. It fits beautiful in here. It fills this area and holds four quarts of oil, which keeps this thing running very cool without an oil cooler. So it's a really cool setup, I think. We kept the mechanical brake on here for cleanliness. As you can see, there's no front brake. These bikes are built to go. They stop. They could stop better, but they want the clean look and the style, and this is what I go for. 
So the rear brake is the original right side brake, 78 Sportster, but I converted to a rod setup, which is very strong, very positively always there because she's only running one brake. Moving back into the brake again, you'll notice all the holes here drilled. This is ventilation. The brake will get hot, it will fade being a mechanical brake. It being the only brake we have, I'm pulling cool air into the brake. Also through the actual drum, there's holes drilled around that, kind of like a disc rotor, which makes better stopping power. The back of the drum also has holes drilled in for exit of cool air in, warm air out. So it's a pretty, pretty nice brake setup. Um, the thing stops it very well and uh, kept it very clean looking, which is what we were going for. 16 inch tire in the back, white wall, Classic Harley, 21 on the front. Stuck with classic spokes on this bike. I think it just gave it a real simple, kind of LA lowrider type look. I could have chose any wheel, but I kept classic chrome 40 spoke wheels on it. I think it's just pure classic to the bike. Uh, it really, really pretty good, I, I feel. Little fender struts, again, I make all these little parts here. Well, bums on attachment point, so nice little short little fender. Basically it just keeps a couple drops of rain and rocks off your back, but love that look at that open tire in the back. Some of the wiring and as you can see the throttle cable here, we dug into the frame. It's a very short area here where you don't see throttle cable, but I like this cleanliness here and we dug it right out of the frame right here. So short run of hiding a cable and a couple wires, but I think it really works in the end. The risers, 9 inch risers on top of the VL Springer, high headlight, which I always love. I love seeing the headlight in front of me as my first point of vision where you can direct this bike around. Coming up, I thought the bars were a little high. Picked a set of bars strictly out of a catalog to call Clubman bars. Tried a couple different sets, didn't like what I was seeing. Ultimately, how things work out. The set of bars look much better upside down. And there you go, which bought a nice, right into the tank area here, not too high, no shaky eight hangers, so it's a very, very positive steering bike. But they're not custom bars, it's just a good bike builder will take apart, see it in different ways. I see things backwards, upside down, which we got these bars. And we'll get to the front, you'll see how the curve of the bar also works with the curve of the springer. Headlight, nothing special, custom chrome, but we love the little bit of brass trim on it. I like the high mount, brings the whole bike up, makes the front end a little longer on it because it's such a short front end, it's a stock fork on it. Um, fuel tank, standard Sportster tank, classic Sportster decal. I love the way this looks with the black, the gray, the little bit of chrome, a little bit of brass, the green, and the black and white. I'm picking up, as you can see through this bike, all the colors bouncing all around the bike. So your visual, you're picking up everything everywhere. Everything blends nicely. Coming into the front end part, which I think is one of the most unique parts of this bike, and I think it really made the bike. It was a great decision on the owner's part in mind to put a Springer on it. Uh, it's a, again, as I said, a 30s BL Springer. I did mention that the leg is now rear back here. This is what they call an I-beam Springer. It's not a hollow leg. It's a solid steel I-beam, so it's very, very strong. And uh, I like the narrowness of, if you really get a scope of what I see here, this yoke in here of the Springer actually picks up this yoke that I have with the handlebars upside down, pushes everything into that one basic shape. And if you see this bike, the beauty of it is basically the shape of it and where I use the shapes against each other and the colors. So this, I think, just came out absolutely beautiful. I love the height of the headlight. I love the curve down the bars. Basically, my theory was to bring the bars up and then take them back down again instead of bringing them up higher. We had put these on the way they were supposed to be, which is, these are upside down, actually. In my eye, that's what I saw work. A stock set of handlebars out of a catalog. It didn't require making them. It required simply turning them upside down and seeing them from a different point of view, which is how I build these bikes. It's all in my mind's eye, and this is what comes out of it. Uh, simple, single throttle cable, ducks into the frame here. As I mentioned before, you don't see it hanging out of the tank, flopping around. Pretty cool little detail. Tiny little mirror, three inch. Believe it or not, you can see everything out of this mirror. It's not out of place. It works beautiful there. And it's a very nice bike to ride. You can see everything behind you. Just the cleanliness of it with no brake. 
Simple axle spacers, nice little skinny tire. Very skinny bike, but very, very strong front end. Love the springs, uh, the little bit of brass. Just clean, simple, effective, strong. This bike handles extraordinary. I think because of this front end, you think where you want to go, it goes there. It doesn't require any effort at all. It's a body English bike. You don't steer, you lean in. You, the thing is just beautiful handling. Coming around to the left side of the bike now, um, most Harleys you see are usually prettier on the right side of the bike. A right side is nice with exhaust pipes, gives you a lot of creativity in the exhaust system. I kind of prefer to make the left side as pretty as the right. I think I pull that off pretty well here as far as detailing. Uh, again, coming back up into the area of the neck, a little tiny screw here serves a purpose. It's basically a fork stop when you gently set the fork down so it doesn't hit the frame. Little tiny details on first going the tank up with raising the bracket, fully molding that all into a nice little shape. Sets the tank real pretty. And one thing a lot of people see when they come in here they don't quite understand is what is this? Basically what I do here is being such a small gas tank and not really capable of more than 100 miles, you really have to watch your fuel on this bike. You kind of get caught up in it as you're riding and you don't think of gas. It's a good way to run out of fuel. So this is basically a sight gauge. It's just a clear hose which shows your fuel level as your fuel drops. A lot of guys know this, a lot of guys don't surprisingly, but this gives you a vision of where your fuel is. You hit here, you best be looking for gas. Keep your phone warm. Again, I weld all my own bungs in, I relocated the pet cock. It used to be on the right side in the middle of the tank, like a stock sportster. We need every drop of fuel out of this thing at any given moment, so I moved it back. It literally drains every drop of fuel out of the tank on reserve until you're totally out of fuel. But watch that sight gauge, it tells you right where you're at when you're ready to run out of fuel. Um, bringing down into a you know, beautiful cast, I love the sportster here and the sight glass. Again, we kept the clear tubing through everything as far as fuel line, oil lines. I kind of got the feeling of seeing the blood flow through it when I fired the bike up. In fact, Sonny and I fired the bike up. She's behind the camera. And it was really cool to see that blood pumping through this thing for the first time on fire up. Uh, bringing down from here now to the engine, uh, all hardware, obviously chrome plated, very nicely detailed. Every little piece, everywhere, Allen bolts. Good hardware for strength, good for torque. Running a single fire ignition, uh, Dyna, uh, dual fire, I'm sorry, I'm going to let that. Uh, dual fire ignition, short plug wires, to the point, partisan tight, out of the way of your leg, very effective, very simple, away from heat, and just a nice, simple ignition system, very foolproof. Uh, cycle electric voltage regulator, which is an awesome system too on this generator. So it's a beautiful charge of battery and pushing 14.89 volts to the battery, which is awesome. We also ran an oil filter on it. Very easy to get to, very easy to drain your oil. No mess at all. Simple filter change. So she's running a filter off the motor mount. Again, a simple sportster part. I keep all my controls where they were from stock because to ride a bike like this, it's a very agile bike, it's a very leanable bike, and very roadworthy. You need all the ground clearance you can get. Forward controls do not give you that. I always felt forward controls also give you a very sloppy feeling in the shifter and the brake linkages. So I keep it where Harley designed it, and it's a very nice bike to shift. Once you get your feet up there, it's very comfortable. So I like the mid controls. I think they're, they're the best for these sportsters, and I don't change the forward controls. Again, I don't like the sloppiness of linkages in between. I'm gonna move around back again here. And tail light, license plate, and if you notice on the bike, pretty much everything electrical stops right here. We run nothing back to the swing arm. All we have back here is a chain and a brake rod. Very simple. All the action basically stops right in this area. Design a switch box. Headlight low, headlight high, headlight off. As far as starting the bike, what I like to do is this is basically a car ignition. Off, on turn and start to the car. There's no key, no starter button combination. That is the start for the bike. Simple ignition. Again, coming back in sight to sight. Now from fuel tank sight to oil tank. There's really nothing to check on this bike except looking at these sights before you ride it. When you see no oil in this tube, 
your court allow it set up perfectly for that. She's full now. Again, the owner can simply look at the sight glass as he's riding. He can look at this any time of the day, see where his oil level is at. Pretty cool. Um, Bike kind of talks you in its own way with the sight glasses. Uh, again, everything fully molded back in here. Just a beautiful job. I really excel at that, I think, and I spend a lot of time. This is where 30 plus hours just molding the frame and all the little fittings here. But as you can see, how it just flows everything. Uh, I'm talking like I'm in love because I am. I think this is probably one of the sweetest bikes I've ever built. I'm very, very proud of it. So bear on my ramblings. Uh, uh, again, the clear oil hoses I think are very cool. You'll see the oil pulsing up into the return. Coming to the back side of the bike, which is one of my favorite areas. I love these little bobbers for the simple fact that just a skinny tire, guys. You don't need a 300 tire. This thing handles extraordinary. Um, I'm not really into fat tire bikes so much. I think it gives it a beautiful profile. Front, back, sides. Uh, I just love the balance look. Uh, simple 5, 10 by 16 tire back here. Classic Harley Davidson. Again, you get a better shot of the tail light here. It says stop, which is kind of cool. Again, nothing special except I painted it gold. Simply works as a tail light. Brake light says stop, if you can see that on video, I don't know. One simple brake switch, two wires, that's the tail light. Fixed to the primary cover, not a lot of vibration going on because it's not hanging off the frame, it's not taking a hit when you hit a bump with a hard tail. So it's basically coming right off the end and all my wiring stops right here. Nothing to the tail, nothing through the frame back there at all. Um, everything's accessible to your leg to come in here. Everything fits beautifully when you're sitting on the bike, past the fuel line, past the coil, right to the peg, tail light behind it. Beautiful, beautiful fitting bike when you're sitting on it, riding it.